What is up guys, Max here, and welcome back to another tutorial. Now, in today's tutorial, we'll be learning how to make a simple subscribe animation for all of your videos. Also, if you're interested, there is an advanced subscribe animation tutorial that I have as well. So, for this tutorial, animation on the left, that's what we're doing. If you want to jump over and follow the advanced version of this, animation on the right, which there will be a link down in the description for that. Other than that, feel free to download this project file down in the description, along with the advanced one down in the description. Make sense? So, let's get started. And right before we get started, I want to let you know the font that we'll be using is Proxima Nova. So, again, link down in the description. If you have Adobe Cloud or in any way, you'll have Typekit, which you can just download this. And it is a really great font. Yeah, so... Boom. So I have After Effects open here. We can see that subscribe comes out, the shape comes out. There's like a little bit of a layer-ish kind of thing going on with the shapes. There's like, if you go frame by frame, you can see here that there's like other colors of this right here. Um, nice little different shades of red for YouTube. Um, but yeah, that's about it. So let's make this thing. So in your project panel, you will right click new composition. Um, for me, since I make... Uh, 4k videos I'm using a 3840 by 2160 P comp for you you can type in 1920 not 1952 don't type 1952 1920 by 1080 Q 1080 I'm terrible at this 1080 and change the frame rate to 60 for all animation do 60 frames per second now this is a five second animation so we will do 0, 05 on the duration and, and bam, just like that. Now, once this pops open, what you're going to do is grab the rectangle tool right up here. And if you don't see the rectangle tool, maybe it's a circle, maybe it's a polygon, just click and hold, drop down to rectangle tool. What we'll do is turn on our title and action safe to see where we need to kind of build this rectangle from. So I'll drag this out. And let's say about this big is kind of good. Um, as we can see right now, the anchor point is... Um, automatically drafted to the center of the composition what we want to do is actually pull this anchor point to the middle of the shape so we'll grab our anchor point tool right here pan behind click on our shape grab the anchor point and drag it to the middle of our shape actually let's ping it to the edge of our shape hit control on your keyboard and boom it will automatically kind of ping it to the side there which is really awesome now we might want to take on our keyboard and just kind of like move this thing to the exact position on here as like a title and action safe title and action safe lower third which is nice this pretty much perfect right there now what we need to do is change this shape to red so click on your shape layer and we'll go to the fill up here click on this and a dialog box pops open and drag the fill up to bright red I kind of like tone the red down a little bit for me I think yeah this is totally fine um, just like that. Now what we're going to do is grab our text tool, click on the screen, and type subscribe. Subscribe. I'm terrible at typing. It's not even a, a joke. Anyways, then we highlight the text. We go to our character tools. Let's just close some of this stuff down because we don't need all this. Effects, we'll use it later. Now I'll go to window, character tools, or just character. Popped up back down there for some reason. Um, there it is, and we will change it to white. And also, Proxima Nova. Proxima Nova Bold. Yeah, then we'll grab this text. Um, before we do anything, we're going to actually make sure the paragraph of this text right here is selected in the center. You'll see that later. And that our anchor point is also in the center. So we'll zoom in real quick, grab our hand tool, move over. Um, grab our pan behind tool once again and move the anchor point to the center. Hold control on your keyboard and ping it to the middle of that. Now we can drag this onto the middle of our subscribe, you know, shape. Then what we can do is actually highlight both of these and go to our align tool somewhere. Align right here. If you don't see it, as always, go to window and then align and pop it open right here. So align layers to selection and we will center these on each other. Barely moved it, but hey kind of worked out and now we can actually grab this uh, little um, pan behind anchor point and move this to the center of the shape control ping it to the middle and we will select both of these once again and then do align to the center 
just like that. So now we have our subscribe and our shape perfectly aligned with each other. But what we want to do, it's kind of moved off to the screen a little bit you know, un under our action safe, which is kind of not what we want. So we're just going to move this over a little bit. Oop, wrong button. Click our V or our pointer tool. Move this over to line up back with that. Cool. Now what we're going to do now is actually grab our anchor point of our shape and move it back to the side over here. So boom, right there. Control, ping it to there. So we can start animating this thing. So right now, grab your shape layer and right about one and a half seconds, 130 right here, click P on your keyboard, click this little stopwatch to keyframe the position, then click S on your keyboard to keyframe the scale. So this is where it's going to end up at its full scale and position. Then back in time a little bit, we want it to scale down from the reverse of what we saw before where it comes out and scales up. So we're right here, we want it to be right here. Um, grab our scale, our Y axis, and move it down, but we have a problem. It is scaling from its anchor point propor proportionally, which, which is what we don't want. So undo that. We're going to unclick this little keychain right here. And then now we can scale it just on the Y axis. So scale it down right above where subscribe shows. Then it'll sit there for a second. We'll keyframe it one more time because it's going to, you know, it's going to come out, be right there, sit for a second, then scale up. Maybe it's that far. Whoosh, like that. And from here on, it's going to be zero on the x-axis because it scales down to nothing. Boom, boom, like that. Now for our p, uh, now we can hit U on our keyboard to see where the position ends up. It's going to end up right here at the end of the day, and right there, it's going to be off screen. So it's going to slide out. So boom, sit for a second and go up. Now it's not sitting, it's just stopping and then going up. Boom. Boom. Unless we unless we pull these back in time a little bit. Maybe it sits there for a little longer. Move these around, goes out, and then up, just like that. That's pretty good. Boom. Boom. Boom, boom. Now you can play with the timing however you like, it doesn't matter, but that's completely up to you. Now what we need to do is make the reverse animation of this thing going off screen. So it's like that, goes out, open, and then it's going to kind of do the same thing in reverse. So what we're going to do is you just start copying these keyframes in reverse. So grab your last one, command C or command or control C and V and then copy and paste. Copy and paste. And copy and paste. Which it basically plays itself in reverse from there on. Just like that. We also need our position keyframe copied somewhere. So it's going to be copied on the second to last one. And this final one is going to be copied here with that. This is going to be at the end of the five seconds. These should be a little closer together, I think. And it's going to go out, sit for a second, go down, and go off. Just like that. Now we need to make this animation a little more dynamic. So we have it here, comes out, looking pretty good. Let's uh, highlight all these keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, and easy ease, which will make the keyframes a little more dynamic. And let's turn this title action safe off because we don't need it anymore, so it looks a little smoother. Now the animation is looking pretty smooth. I like that. We'll keep this for now. Now, we need to make that like tiered look of the animation where it looks like, you know, other colors are coming off the back end when it goes out and it goes in and out. Super, super easy. We'll go to right now. Our composition needs to be a little longer than five seconds. We'll go to composition, composition settings, then we'll change it to six seconds just to have that little extra time on the end. So we will have to add some stuff to this, and we will duplicate this shape layer one two times. So Control or Command D on your keyboard twice to make new stuff. 
Now the two colors on the bottom, which are the ones below the top layer, will be a little bit darker red. And then layer one will be an even darker red. Now if we highlight all of these and click U on our keyboard, we can see all of the keyframes. Now if we offset these a little bit, so grab these two layers below and offset them and then offset this, it's going to actually look like they're being tiered out. But there's it's kind of a weird animation right now. So, so you can see the back end right here, the different colors. And then when it goes off, oh, you can see other colors in here. There's the back end we want on this side, which is the different colors on this side. See this right here? That's what we want. Now, if we look at our old one, it may look a little different. So it's red on this side and then red on the back end as well. But in ours, it's on the front end. So how do we, how do, we do that? It's actually super simple. So we're going to take this top animation, keyframes, and we're actually going to move them in. And then move this one in as well to make the bottom animation come on first. And we can actually stretch these little timelines out and then grab all of these and move them back to start from the very beginning. And now we can see that this goes out like that with different colors. And boom, like that. But what we didn't see in the first one is that when this scales up, it has the other colors in there as well. And let's do some drastic other colors so we can actually see what we're doing. You know, blue and then maybe like a yellow or something. Hey, if you want those three colors, go for it. Looks kind of cool to me. Um, so boom, like that. Now, if you're happy with that, keep it. But for me, I don't want them scaling up under the other thing. I want just red scaling up, which is actually pretty easy to fix. So it comes out just like that and scales up. Um, what we want to do is get rid of the scales inside of the other shape. So we'll just highlight these, you know, these, these uh, scaling layers. So get rid of this. Get rid of this. Get rid of this get rid of this and get rid of this and now it's going to scale up just like that with just red and go back with just that and now we have one final step to make this animation you know the piece de resistance or whatever they say I think it's French um, we need this subscribe to be revealed by the red shape so we're going to take shape layer 3, control or command D to duplicate it onto your screen, drag it above subscribe, um, and we're going to go to track mat. Um, and if you don't see track mat, really easy, just right click in this gray area on your layer panel, go to columns, and click modes, which will open up track mat. Well, once you do that, you're going to click subscribe, go to track mat, alpha mat shape layer 4, which means only show through the layer on top of me. Now, because um, the keyframes on this duplicated shape layer 4 are the exact same as shape layer 3, it will just kind of go out like this, reveal, subscribe, open up, and then close down, just like that. How cool is that? Now, okay, now that we've made this, let's save the project, so file, save as, and let's say we want to just open this up in Premiere, and we want to be able to change this text while we're in Premiere Pro. This is a little bit extra on the tutorial if you're still watching, thank you. Um, but we're going to open up Premiere Pro. It'll load. And we're going to open up our new After Effects file. And we will have a cool animation that you can just drag and drop onto your compositions to change this text here as much as you want. So here's Premiere Pro. This looks weird, Lumetri Scopes is all messed up. But anyways, we can't actually import our After Effects file. So import, here's our advanced subscriber animation. Click open, which it'll prompt us some stuff. We want to import comp3, because that's what was in our After Effects file. Click OK. And we will right click new item. Let's do a sequence and 1080p at 30 frames a second. That's or 24 or that's or let's do 60. 1080p, go to settings, let's go to 60 frames per second, click OK. Let's drag a photo onto here real fast so we have a background to use. I'm just going to drag any random picture from my backgrounds in, which will use the current background that you saw on the video just a second ago. 
it's so big right now because it's a picture. We're going to scale it down to fit our composition. And we'll drag this After Effects composition onto our project. Subscribe. Just like that. One fourth. Let's go to full quality. Make it a little bigger so we can see. It should fit our action and title safe perfectly. Yes, it does. And then what we can do is actually click on this After Effects animation, go to the effect control panels inside of Premiere Pro window, effect controls, and actually click on this Master Comp 3 Advanced right here. And boom, it lets us change the text on subscribe. So we can do Maxwell. We can type, I don't know if it'll fit Maxwell Ridgeway. Too big, that's okay. That means we would have to go into uh, After Effects and just change the scale on this, uh, this shape. Um, we can do all kinds of stuff, but it stays the same font, which is good. So we can do, hello. And then we can actually duplicate this. Grab this, change the advanced here, subscribe. So boom, goes on like that. And you could have this like After Effects project file and all of your videos just changing it as you go. Do what, hello. Subscribe. So you don't have to have the animation. You can just use that project file. You don't have to render anything out. It's just built into your project, which is really awesome. So, that's a cool little tip on top of this once you've made this to use in all your videos. That is how you make this quick and easy subscribe animation. And I would consider it a beginner tutorial. Um, but other than that, feel free to jump over to the next tutorial and follow the more advanced animation tutorial to take a look at this right here, which is this kind of the same thing, but has a little bit of extra stuff. We have a a mouse pointer that comes out, it clicks and turns 8K to 9K for subscriber count and you can change the uh, numbers to whatever you want. You know, we can change it to 100K, whatever. And it has a little bit of color change here, that what it actually looks like when you click on a subscriber button for anybody. Which I do think, as now that I look at it, that there needs to be a D when you click subscribed. <laughs> which I'll put that in there before I finish this thing. But other than that, I'm Max. Please like and subscribe, literally, with the button we just did. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace.